uh, you know, and, and that leads me to this other question, though, and that is because you know we we the 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 white male. You are a white male, Jerry. I'm a black man, but the white male is the prototype of the quintessential corporation, and. You know, and of course, I, I do recognize that there are exceptions to the rule. That's why we have a powerful white male like you talking to us, and you're comfortable in engaging, having this level of dialogue. And I do recognize that not all powerful white male want to have this dialogue. So I'm curious, though, as you change that culture, you know, as 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 you're pushing for to 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 expand the table of equity here, uh, obviously there's going to be natural reactions. And so I, I had a conversation a couple of months ago with a very powerful white male law enforcement leader. And this individual said to me, uh, they've been trying to diversify this powerful law enforcement agency. And they said to me that they've been facing a lot of backlash from within the ranks. I said, well, what does your rank look like? And he said, it's all white male. He said, you know, they want to keep it the way it's going. And so here, and 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 I said to this individual, well, I mean, you're calling the shots, right? You're a boss, right? I said, so you can decide who goes and who stays. You know, and those who are within your ranks, and they're in management, they're not, you know, let me clarify, they're not unions. So you can decide who goes and who stays. So the question of whether, you know, you can create change or not, it's on you. Yes. But there's no point crying to me about what you're trying to do and who is trying to undercut that. What I'm trying to say is within the corporation, this was law enforcement. It's a powerful law enforcement agency here in the state of Michigan. But within the corporate context and with affirmative action uh, uh, at, at the forefront of this dialogue here, uh, what happens when you have reactions where people are not amenable to the direction that you want to go in terms of equity and inclusion uh, because DT has a history, you know, and it's a well-documented history. It's not a pretty history. Go ahead. So we've, uh, we've come a long way from that, uh, that long history, uh, Bank Lay, and I, I think you know this, but if you look at my leadership team, let's start at the very top of the house, right? Um, you know, the number two person in the company is a black female, Joy Harris, who I recently appointed uh, to be the president and chief operating officer of DTE Energy. Never happened uh, in the city of Detroit. The most powerful um, operating position in a Fortune 500 company in the city of Detroit being the number two person in the company. And uh, my general counsel is uh, a Hispanic woman uh, that grew up in, in Southwest Detroit. So if you start surrounding yourself with diversity, uh, my head of human resources is a white female so if you start creating diversity in your senior leadership team, and this did not uh, happen by accident, but it also was a very careful process uh, to make sure that people were mentored and developed for these positions so that they could be successful and that there was merit in the appointments. These were not appointments because of race or, or diversity, but we prepared these leaders so they could compete and have access to these positions. And this was a 20-year process, and it started when I got here. And um, it, it really has evolved. So if you look at my lineup, it's one of the most senior diverse leadership uh, profiles in, in the city of Detroit. So that's something I'm really proud of. And that did not happen by accident. So you start at the top. And so when you start, you said, how, how do you deal with pushback? Well, when you have a diverse leadership team, the pushback doesn't happen as much because people understand and understand what needs to be done in order to create access to uh, great paying jobs or, or great contracts at the, uh, you know, at a company like uh, DT Energy that creates diversity in the community and creates prosperity in the community. And I just uh, also want to give you a reason you might say, well, why is a, you know, white guy so interested in this, you know, and, you know, a little bit about, about my background, you know, my family came from Italy in the 1950s and uh, we came to Italy because of poverty. I mean, there was a lot of poverty in the villages that we came from. We were in the mountains in the central part of Italy, and it was really destroyed after World War II. But even before World War II, um, there was a lot of poverty. So I would venture to say that for hundreds of years, my family lived in poverty. And we came to this country and we were given access. You know, it wasn't easy to get access because we were also new and we were also very different uh, when we arrived as Italian immigrants. 
And there was a lot of uh, ideas about suppressing progress, you know, uh, when you were an immigrant. And uh, so we had to deal with some of that, not as much as perhaps other races and ethnic groups have had to deal with in this country, like the black community. Uh, but um, uh, it really resonates with me uh, as a personal mission in my position to have the ability to change the future of people, right? To give them access to great jobs and great opportunities through DTE Energy. I think it's just uh, a way to lift another family, another human being out of poverty. Somebody gave my family that chance. And I guess my um, um, pay forward on that is I want to do it for other people too. And as much as I possibly can while I'm in this position. So every day I think about that, you know, am I, am I making a difference? Uh, in addition to running a successful company, am I making a difference in people's lives to lift people out of poverty? Uh, just like I was given and my family was given the opportunity to be lifted out of poverty. So it's uh, it's a big deal for me personally. And uh, and I think you bring that to the job every day.